Hello and welcome back to the Airsoft Boneyard and FPS channel. We are continuing on our TAC-41 build series. This time we're going to look at the effect of all the springs we have on the Scorpion piston from Stalker. It's a variable mass piston. It comes with two different air brakes, short and long, and two different piston cups, a high FPS and a silent piston cup. Let's dive into the data. There's going to be a lot of data here because we are comparing all the springs and we are also, also are comparing the air brake differences as well as the different piston cups. We're going to go in a little bit different order than I have in the past. We're going to start with energy because when we're looking at this many springs, that's really going to help us figure out where we want to be. Look at the energy that you want for your field, then carry that down to look at what you're going to chrono at if you have to chrono with point twos like I do. And then also go ahead and continue down to looking at sound and other results and standard deviations. So here we have energy. On these graphs, the orange bar is the two joule ray packs. We already showed that in a previous video, so that's not new. The gray bar is the 2.8 joule ray packs. The yellow bar is the 150 Newton silverback and the blue bar is the ray packs Hulk, which I believe is the strongest spring from ray packs. I also have a ray packs three joule, but I've not gotten around to testing it yet. When you see these nomenclatures, silent means the silent piston cup, FPS means the high FPS version. Light means we're at the lighter variable mass piston. So it's as light as we could go. That's all aluminum pieces with an aluminum head. Heavy is the opposite. That's all steel pieces except for one because the kit comes with four steel pieces, but you need five for a full length piston. So that's four steel, one aluminum with the steel head. I believe this is about 82 grams and the light one is about 43. I could have that slightly backwards. It might be 42 and 83. At the bottom, I also have the stock TAC 41 results. So this is just a spring change, everything else stock, no fancy piston or anything here. Whenever we see short, that means we have the short air brake set at the shortest setting. Long is the long air brake set at the longest setting. So we kind of sweep the whole window. You could adjust these between those settings. All right, let's look at energy. And keep in mind, when I chrono with 0.2s, I need to be at 550 feet per second or less, which is 2.8 joules. So anything past that on the right side could be joule crept over. If that's what you're after, I'm looking more so for a 2.8. So looking at some of this data, what looks really good to me, silent piston cup, heavy piston, short air brake, right, right at 2.8 joules with the Ray Pax Hulk, which is pretty good, but that's a pretty heavy spring. So if you're comfortable with pulling a heavy spring all day, this would be a pretty good result for you. My goal is to keep the spring as light as possible. So what I'm looking at here more so is the two jewel ray pack spring is never getting up high enough, not getting it up to the 2.8 that I want. But if your field requires maybe 2.3, you'd actually be pretty good here with this high FPS cup, light piston, short air brake right at 2.2. Pretty good, very, very easy spring to pull. For me, I'm currently gonna be looking more so at the 2.8 Joule Ray Packs uh, or the three Joule Ray Packs, which is between the 2.8 and the Hulk. I like this result right here. FPS head, light piston, short air brake, 2.6. It's pretty close to the 2.8 I wanted and it would allow me to use a lighter spring. Now, if I really wanted the 2.8 joule or maybe slightly higher or something I could tweak down, I can look at using these heavier pistons. The heavier pistons are gonna jewel creep harder. So we're gonna get a bigger jewel creep. You can see for the Ray Pax Hulk, we're only at 2.5 joules with this high velocity, high FPS piston head, the heavy piston, the short air brake. Only 2.5 joules, which means I'm under 550 feet per second. But that creeps all the way up to 3.3 with the heavier BB at the same settings. Keep in mind the hop up is set right in the middle here, right at five. For these 0.45s at the field, I usually run around seven on my stock hop up. So I'll be a little bit higher than this, but I'd probably still be okay on chrono. You could get a lot of jewel creep out of this. If I needed to bring this down, I could actually just lengthen the air brake. So I, I like this one as a tuner. If I wanted to bring this down, I would have to use the heavy spring but I could definitely get it to 2.8. Or I could just go with the silent heavy short, get right at 2.8. Or similar, this high FPS cup, light piston, short air brake, similar to the heavy does very well. Actually jewel creeped quite a bit as well. 
3.8 is the highest number we saw in this chart. That is quite a bit of energy. The bad news here, though, is this is over 2.8, so I'm going to chrono too high. So if you tried this, you'd probably over chrono it. You could pull the air break out a little bit, though, and that would help you out. The silent and long air break combos are simply too low on the energy rating for me. You actually see that the weaker springs are almost performing the same as the stronger springs. No big surprise there. Weaker springs like longer air brakes, stronger springs like shorter air brakes, which is why we see this huge separation when we look at the short air brake results. But overall, we definitely have some contenders here. I like this FPS light short. I know that with my three joule spring, I'm probably going to get pretty close to where I want to be. Or I can simply add a little bit more mass to make this joule creep closer to 2.8. Diving into sound, we didn't get anything that was actually super quiet. Now keep in mind, this is with the sound meter right under the chamber of the replica, so it's gonna be about as loud as possible. Uh, that being said, that FPS light short combo with the 2.8 joule ray packs is about 95 decibels, which is actually one of the lower values on here at a reasonable energy level. I mean, yes, these light and light long air brakes and light long pistons, they do Great, I mean, it's 91 decibel, but that's, let's see, 1.2 to 1 1.7 joules. It's not enough for, for me in my field. So generally speaking, anything that I saw that was 95 or less, I was pretty interested in. This silent heavy long was about the lowest we got at 87. If we look at the energy results there, once again, really low. And this makes sense. You're pushing less energy into the replica. It's going to be a little bit quieter. So pretty happy with 95. You can see there's not a ton of spread here. You're going to be, generally speaking, for the decent energy areas between 94 and 97. So I was fine staying around 95. Keep in mind, there's no suppressor or anything on this. It's just purely the TAC-41 with the springs and the Scorpion piston. You can see the FPS results here. I'm not going to spend much time on them because we spent a lot of time on the energy section and direct calculation, take FPS to get energy. Uh, I usually use this just more so for checking what I'm going to chrono at and knowing how much I can play with it. So if I go for that FPS light short, um, 491 feet per second, which tells me I can move my hop up up to seven and I'll still chrono just fine. Generally, I was seeing about a 50 FPS sweep between 0 hop up and 10. So if I'm up at 7 and it was already at 5 here, it's not going to go up that much. I'll be fine. And that'll also probably push me real close to that 370 FPS area, which is right around 2.8 joules. Just what I want. Now, admittedly, I won't personally be using this setup because I'm going to throw in the Morpheus barrel and the crack and hop up. But if I was to not push further, that would probably be my setup. Looking at standard deviations, that's one of the only areas where I don't get great results. I was kind of hoping to be less than one standard deviation. We ended up at about 1.8 if I go with this setup. It's not bad. It's pretty good. It's not less than the one, which was our target. But most of these higher energy ones are not less than one. They're all at least one to two. So 1.8 right here is pretty good. The one thing to point out, the 150 Newton Silverback and the two Joule Ray Packs were kind of all over the place on center deviation, whereas the 2.8 Joule and the Ray Packs Hulk were pretty consistent. There's only kind of one weird result for the Hulk, and the 2.8 Joule was had one weird result as well. Other than that, everything was pretty low and grouped up very well. I know that was a lot of data, and I could probably rush through that a little bit, so please take your time, look through the, the graphs, look through the charts. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to let me know. Up next, I'm going to do a short video that compares the Kraken hop-up to the one that's in the TAC-41, the stock hop-up chamber. Kind of show what I like, what I don't like, and show the differences between them. That was a request to one of the viewers. I thought it was a pretty good idea. And after that, I'll start getting into very similar data, but with that crack and hop up. After I finish that, I think I'm going to swap to a shorter barrel. Had a lot of fun playing with the TAC-41, but it is a pretty long replica. And I play a lot in the woods, which can be kind of hard to maneuver it around. 
uh, branches and such. So I think I'm actually going to drop it to a 330 millimeter barrel and then repeat some of this testing to see what it does. It'll be a Morpheus barrel as well, so I don't have to change out anything else. And I also might try an SR hop from Stalker to see how that does. If you guys have any other ideas for this channel, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, we're going to continue blowing through these TAC41 videos. And if you have any questions along the way, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them.